Hello, Hima friends, and welcome to this new episode of our Long Sword Guide series. Today, we are going to give a look to Posta di Donna. Posta di Donna is an offensive defensive guard. It closes the right upper opening and it can easily cover the upper left opening with its main movement. It can also close all the upper openings if used as an arriving point, namely as a parry during an action. Its selection of attacks vary depending from the fashion and the situation in which the guard is reached, but whatever the case, they tend to be extremely powerful. Master Fiore tells us that Postalidona has a variety of quite unique features. One of them is being able to land all the seven blows of the sword. So he is referring to Sotani, Mezzani and Fendenti from both sides and of course the thrust, the punta. Master Fiore also tells us that Postalidona can defend from uh, every blow and uh, we are now going to see why and how. So to understand how this posta works, we need to introduce a new concept. And it is the difference between guardia, guard, and the posta, position. So in the introduction part of the manual, Fiore says that there is no difference between guardia and posta. And saying guardia is the same as saying posta. So guard is the same thing as position because every guardia is a posta and every posta is a guardia. But what he means by telling this to us, because he repeats it three times, it is a really important concept that we have to understand. So posta, in my understanding, position, is a position that we end up assuming during the fight. So by moving through our blows, cuts, thrusts, parries, etc., we move from one position to the other. And so we move from one posta to the other. Instead, when we are approaching the opponent from out of measure, we enter our guard when we feel ready and in the correct, at the correct distance. And uh, this thing, this uh, guardia is of course our guard, but as Fiore says, saying guardia and saying posta is the same thing, because in the end, we will use more or less the same positions. It is not casually that I decided to introduce you to this new concept by using Posta di Donna, because Fiore does it himself in the Getty manual before the Posta section. He shows this version of Posta di Donna and this version of Posta di Donna, saying that they are basically the same, they are facing each other, and they are basically the same kind of guard. In my understanding, this position is the guard and this position is the posta, generally speaking. Not always, of course, because as Fiore says, saying posta and saying guardia is the same. Very good. Let's now give a look to the main offensive movements of our guard, posta di donna. The first and main offensive action is, of course, the right fendente. It can be delivered either toward longa, namely toward the center line, or across the center line, reaching Dente de Zangiar in a big arch. This is the main and most obvious attack motion of the guard. The second offensive action is the right mezzano. This cut has many purposes. The first one is of course attacking the opponent directly, at targets which go from the head to the knee. By landing it from posta di donna against someone in posta di donna, it is also possible to cross the line of the fendente, preventing the opponent attack. Both the above actions, if landed at the proper distance and with proper hands slash feet timing, can deliver a thrust. This thrust can be landed to hit the opponent directly, while opposing the blade to the left upper or lower line. With proper timing and enough precision, it is possible to land a fendente against someone sitting in longa, engaging their guard with an aggressive exchange of thrusts. From this guard, it is also possible to land a reverse fendente. It helps to slightly move the head aside while doing so. This is generally done to target the right arm of the opponent in a motion which, while not being a feint per se, it plays on the expectations of the opponent of receiving a mandaito.
So as you have noticed, we have now seen the main offensive movement of our Posta di Donna as a guard. Now let's give a look to the main offensive options, the main offensive movements of our Posta di Donna as a Posta. While reaching Posta di Donna during the fight, we have access to all the seven blows of the sword, namely Fendenti, Mezzani and Sotani from both sides, and the thrust, of course. The trick sits in moving from one side to the other of the body, passing behind your back from Posta di Donna. When moving from right to left behind your back, it will be possible to land your Roversi, Sotani, Mezzani and Fendenti. Same thing if you do the opposite. While reaching the Posta from left to right, you'll have access to the Mandriti. The thrust can be landed by extending one of the mentioned blows into a thrust, instead of moving into an arch to cut through the opponent. Ah, by the way, if you like this t-shirt and uh, you want one too, check in the uh, video description, you will find the link to the Redbubble page of my girlfriend Elisa. She is making this kind of uh, Hima Animals design, there are a ton of them and uh, of course She's making more of them and um, you can have them on t-shirts and on other tools. So if you like Hima and animals together or whatever, this is the red bubble for you. <laughs> Very good. So we have seen the basic movement of our posta di donna as a posta and as a guard. Now let's give a look to the main defensive options, the main defensive actions, which are described by Fiore himself and the most relevant action that we can do also for defending ourselves for the main attacks that we may receive. The first defensive action while engaging the opponent from out of measure with posta di donna is the exchange of thrusts. These can be landed against someone thrusting at you and sometimes even at someone cutting at you. The goal is to stick your thrust into the opponent action during its own tempo, using the strong leverage of your fendente or the angle of your mezzano to displace the opponent attack. If you want to more specifically defend from a cut, instead it is better to cut over it from this kind of position. You can answer back with different cuts or thrusts depending by how much you displace the opponent cut. Posta di Donna is also the ideal position to counter leg cuts on time. It is crucial to say that it can be done by any other posta, but uh, Posta di Donna is ideal as you simply have to drop down a fendente on the head of the opponent while moving your leg out of the way of their cut. Very good. Let's now give a look to how use this posta as a posta. So, by reaching the position during the fight. As we have seen for Porta di Ferro 2, you remember by breaking the opponent thrust with Porta di Ferro, by reaching Porta di Ferro. We have uh, something similar but uh, in a greater scale, let's say, uh, talking about Pasta di Donna, because as Fiore says, this pasta is very good for defending and he's not only talking about delivering some kind of cut to exchange a thrust or beat down uh, another attack. He is uh, talking about reaching this kind of position to defend yourself during a simple or complex action, as a parry, basically. Here you are simply watching the application of the previous defensive motions of the guard as a position to reach. I chose three actions to show you these motions with the seven blows as a repost. In the first case, the opponent lands a direct thrust. In the second, the opponent feints a thrust and then lands a tverhau toward my head. And in the third case, the opponent beats aside my blade to cut a mandorito fendente inside of the newly created opening. The 
It is also possible, of course, to use this pasta as a standalone pairing without repost, either to run away after a successful or failed action or to retreat. Very good. As you have seen, we have basically landed all the seven blows of the sword as reposts uh, after reaching Postedonna as a parry. Let's now give a look to the text, the gloss itself, and uh, of course, I will translate it for you. Very good. Let's go. So, questa si è posta di donna, che può fare tutti gli sette colpi della spada. So, this is posta di donna, which can do all the seven blows of the sword. E di tutti i colpi, ella se può coverire. And uh, from every blow, she, let's say, that in Italian is female, but it, let's say, can defend. E rompe le altre guardie per i grandi colpi che può fare. So, and it breaks the other guards because of the strong blows that she can land. So, uh, so as you have seen as an example, uh, breaking a posta longa, for example, or another posta di donna, or actually landing a cut, a very strong and fast cut against Porta di Ferro, it's the same. it is basically this kind of concept. It is tr landing a blow from Posta di Donna, is strong, is fast, so that's it. E per scambiare una punta, ella è sempre presta. So it is uh, always ready to do the exchange of trust, as you have seen in uh, our defensive section of this video. Lo perché denanzi a cresce fuori di strada. E quello di Doedo passa la traversa. So basically he is describing now the most uh, ideal kind of stepping solution to use this kind of posta. Now generally speaking this is uh, related with uh, this cambiar di punta. So he says of course do an accresore for the strada. So let's say an half step uh, sideways with your front foot and then uh, do a uh, step with your uh, rear foot, uh, passa la traversa, so do a, most probably some kind of movement sideways, in my opinion. Some people translate it as a full step forward and sideways. By my point of view, in my interpretation, it's just moving a la traversa, so the traversa, imagine that there is a straight line and the other, line, other lines which crosses this kind of line, like the star of Marozzo, for example, you know. So when you do a passare la traversa, you basically move to another line. And you can do it in different ways, actually. So you can do it just by moving sideways or moving sideways and forward, etc., etc. So, lo pecche dinanzi a cresce fuori di strada, the front foot, which is forward, moves sideways. E quello di dredo passa la traversa, so the back one goes to the traversa. So again, in my opinion, going to the traverse line, another line, for other people, is moving forward and sideways in some kind of direction, dep depending from the kind of interpretation. E lo compagno fare in maniera di scoverto. So, he says that the opponent remain uh, without cover. So, this actually is what makes me think that my point of view about the stepping motions is relevant simply because uh, if you want to use this posta as a parry and actually it is one of its most important uses fun enough it's ideal if you move sideways and you reach another line as you have seen basically and when you are doing this kind of thing so it is interesting that this part is exactly after uh, describing the stepping motions the opponent remain without any kind of cover because uh, you are moving toward the side where the sword of the opponent is not. So, e lo compagno fa rimanere di scoverto, the opponent remain without any cover, e quello preferio subito per certo. So, and uh, she does it to hurt the opponent as soon as possible. So I decided to use she because in Italian when you refer to guardia, guardia is female, so you, you use she. Probably in English you should use it, but 
that's how uh, the way in which Italian works. Very good. So this was the Glossa of, uh, of Posta e Donna. I just want to add a brief mention about what Posta e Donna means. Posta e Donna means woman's guide or lady's guide, depending from uh, which kind of translation you prefer or it sounds better for you. Woman's guide is kind of literal translation. Lady's guide, in my opinion, sounds better. Um, and why this guide is called this way? Well, we actually don't know, but I have my own idea, is that these kind of guides are the only one which basically are going behind the head. And so in my opinion, woman's guide is something related to hair, basically. So maybe a woman fixing their hairs in uh, some kind of way, in some kind of fashion. And uh, maybe it refers to uh, this kind of practice, simply because both Posta di Donna and Posta di Donna Sinestra share this kind of common thing. So having the hands close to the hair, behind the hair, or sideways compared to the hair, etc. So maybe this is the, the idea behind it. I'm not sure. It makes sense because, generally speaking, um, women had long hair in general and uh, men not so much. And also having long hair and, uh, um, uh, let's say, having them fashioned in some kind of uh, specific fashion is something that was most probably uh, related with uh, the uh, woman world and not so much the man's one. So maybe it is referring to this kind of practice. Who knows? Very good people, we are at the end of this video. I hope you have found it useful. Remember to check my Patreon page, link in the description, if you want to support me in this channel and uh, to like and subscribe if you want to help me grow up this channel. So again, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. So after finishing the video, I watched the folder of uh, the material I've shot for this video. And so I decided to share with you all these angles in which I show the seven blows of the sword from Posta di Donna as a parry. I think some of you will find it interesting. You basically can see every angle of every cut, let's say, starting from Posta di Donna. So if you want to try out and or you find it harder to do, maybe you can find your solution in this footage.